I want you to go to Isaiah 60, and we're going to read verses 1 through 3. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 3. We're continuing in our series, Kingdom, Culture, Kingdom Over Culture. And I actually have changed the title. It's not light and day. It's actually going to be, Your Light Has Come. Your Light Has Come. Word of the Lord reads, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of of your rising. The subject for the remainder of this message is that your light has come. We need to understand the power and the purpose of light. In the book of Genesis, the scripture declares that there was a beginning. And Moses, the writer of Genesis, declares that God was in the beginning. He wasn't created. But God was present when everything that we have come to understand about life began. And Moses writes in Genesis 1, verse 1, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Those first three words in the beginning is actually one word in Hebrew, bereshit. It means the firstborn. It means the first. Paul tells us that Jesus Christ is the beginning. And so what this means is that God decided that he would create the heavens and the earth because the firstborn from the grave. Jesus the Christ, the lamb slain before the foundation of the world, decided that I'll give my life to redeem humanity. In other words, family, if Jesus didn't agree, if the word did not agree that he would give his life, God would never have created the heavens and the earth. So it says, in the beginning, God created. Jesus is the beginning. And I'm telling you that Jesus is the reason that new things come forth in your life. So if you're here and you're looking for a new direction, if you're here and you're looking for a new start, if you're here and you want a new beginning, it's going to come because Jesus is the beginning. And we see the power of God manifest in the earth. In verse 2 it says, The earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering or moving upon the face of the waters. Those words without form and void are very powerful. Preachers call this tohu bohu. Tohu bohu. What it means is that when before God took his next steps that the earth was without form form it was empty it was lifeless it was confusion it was disorder it was a desert place it was desolation and the spirit of God was hovering over all of that calamity the spirit of God was hovering above all that darkness and above all that emptiness and what we have to recognize is that God is not white knuckled on the throne as some would say. God is not concerned about the evil that's going on to the degree that he is afraid that he won't be able to prevail. In the midst of the death, in the midst of the emptiness, God is hovering over the situations. That's why he needs some intercessors because all he's doing is waiting for a man and a woman, a boy and a girl to begin to agree with him and release prayers and to begin to release decrees and prophetic announcements so that his creative life will not only hover but begin to be injected and inserted in that situation. 
In other words, God is aware if your life is empty. God is aware if your life is desolate. God is aware if your life is surrounded by darkness. But guess what? He's still there. He still is capable of bringing you out. He's still capable of bringing life wherever death has prevailed. And the scripture lets us know God said, let there be light. And there was light. Uh, the most appropriate uh, interpretation of that verse is God said light be. <laughs> that means that God is in control of light. That light has to come subject to God. Uh, but I want to go a little bit further because we need to understand that when God said let there be light, the light came because it was God's decision. But the light was not the sun. The light was not the moon. The light was not the stars. Well, how do you know that, Pastor? Well, it's because the light of the sun and the moon did not come until verse 14 so if that's true pastor then what light is he talking about well God established himself and whenever there is emptiness wherever there's a void wherever there is a, a place that's without form and chaos God first establishes himself because the Bible said God is light come on when you're at home you can do no work when it's nighttime how many men cut the grass and it's dark outside no most of us wait until the morning so we can see what we're mowing down. I'm telling you the creative things that God wants to release in your life will not come unless he's established himself in your life. The Bible says uh, Psalm 27 1 the psalmist says the Lord is my light. Paul says uh, to, to Timothy that God dwells in unapproachable light. In Psalm 36 9 it says that he is the light by which we see. So when he says let there be light he establishes himself over the darkness. He establishes himself over the emptiness. He establishes himself over the void. So if you came in here in need of something and your money doesn't answer the need and your education doesn't answer the need and your boo thing doesn't answer the need you need God to step in the void and establish himself and if that's you I decree right now let there be light light represents purity Light represents truth. Light represents perfection of moral goodness. Uh, when we speak of light, we are speaking of the glory of God. Some scholars believe this was the first instance of the Shekinah glory. Uh, this is not any ordinary light. This is the very glory of God that is expressing itself through light. And it came by the spoken word of God. I'm telling you, if you're looking for a new beginning or a turnaround, you need to hear the word of the Lord. After all, how will they hear if there's no preacher? That's why you need a preacher. Come on, you can get a mayor in the city. You can get a governor that visits the, the city. But guess what? If there's no preacher, there will be no turnaround in the city. It is the preacher who brings forth the word of the Lord. It is the proclaimed decree from heaven that ushers the turnaround. So if you need a turnaround in your life, if you came in here and you are desolate, if you came in here and you feel like my life is a desert, I am dry and very dry, then you need to heed the word of the Lord. Oh, John, the apostle begins to get revelation and he says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Hallelujah. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him was not made anything that was made. Come on. There's nothing that's going to be new in your life unless you have the word. It is the word that brings about, hallelujah, sparks and inspiration. You're not going to have a new direction. You're not going to have a new path unless you receive the word of God because it is through the word of God that creation happens without him was not anything made that was made we need the word of God and when the word of God is released, there is light, meaning there is enlightenment. The entrance of your word giveth light. When God speaks, then the lights come on. Then when God speaks, I have vision. When God speaks, I have clarity. When God speaks, I have, I have understanding. When God speaks, knowledge is imparted into me. 
Oh, God didn't start to work until there was light. <laughs> he didn't start making the firmaments until there was light. He didn't start to bring about the animals and the plants and the birds and the fish until there was light. I'm telling you, some of us came and we're looking for some new things. God, do it for me. I'm telling you, you need the word. Oh, I'm going somewhere. He says, Moses says, verse 4, and God saw that the light was good. And then he separated the light from the darkness. So when light comes, there is illumination. When light comes, that which was hidden is revealed. It's made manifest. He established himself. Now, his brilliance is in the atmosphere. And creativity can begin to unfold. We need to understand that light is going to come in our families, in our neighborhoods, in our cities, because of the word of God. You see, darkness equals being without God's word. John says the light was the life of men. So if we want life, then we need light. And if we want light, it's going to come by the word of God. That's how people are going to see. Paul says the, the enemy has people blinded, y'all. It means there's a smoke screen. They can't see that they're wicked. They can't see that they're bound. They can't see that they're in. But if you, as a vessel of God, will begin to release the word of the Lord, now there's light coming. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how many times you say it. Every time you say it, it's light that's penetrating. Every time you speak the truth, the word of God, there's light beaming this light that's radiating I'm telling you the worst thing a Christian could do is begin to shut their mouths I'm telling you these are the days where God is saying you take the muzzle off of your own mouth and you begin to stand up that's why we declare it's the kingdom over culture I will not be silent I will not allow an interest group or a lobby group to cause me to shut my mouth when I know what God said I'm not going to allow a circumstance I don't care what the paper said I know what they said about me I know what God rather said about me. I know what God said about my family. I know what God said about my children. It does not matter what man says. Let man be the lie and God be the truth. It says he separates light from darkness. And what that word means there, when he says separates, it means to distinguish. It means to divide. In other words, God is the one that determines what is good and what is not good. God is the one that determines what's right and what's not right. He said he saw the light and the light was good. It's God's prerogative. We don't let professors tell us what's right. We don't, make, we don't let lawmakers tell us what's right. I'm praying that we return to the days Come on, where the kings that rule will begin to retreat to the temple to find out what the priest has to say. Oh, they used to get the Urim and the Thummim and to find out what is God saying. I'm praying that we return to a day where there's righteousness in the house of God again, where there's a true word amongst the real prophets and apostles, that we stop leaning towards these imposters and these charlatans. Come on, they got these snake oil and they, they got these lines and they taking money from people. I'm praying that there be some more respect put on the prophets of God and the apostles of God so that those who make decisions for our country and our cities and our states will have confidence and say what is God saying or oh, if you're in the dark it means you are in misery it means you are in obscurity it means that there is death and destruction and ignorance and sorrow and wickedness when you are in darkness you are in night it says he called the light day watch this and the darkness he called night he called the light day and he called the darkness night Light, again, is revelation. I want to slow down a second. But when he says day, yes, it is a reference to chronological time, but here's some revelation here. Day is not so much here associated only with chronological time. Remember, light is day. Darkness is night. In the daytime, there are possibilities that you could embark upon that you can't embark upon when it's dark. 
the plants need sunlight. When it's day, you can be productive. When it's daytime, you can have progress. Jesus says, listen, I must work the works of him that sent me when it's day because the night cometh when no man could work. So if daytime represents progress and productivity and possibility, then nighttime, which is equated with darkness, means that I cannot be productive. It means that I'm limited. It means that there is stagnation. There means that there are some prohibitions against what God may want me to do. Watch this. The nighttime is associated with weeping. Come on. It says weeping may endure for a night, but joy is associated with day. It says, but joy comes in the morning. When it's nighttime, I'm in a place of repose. I'm in a place of resting. I'm in a place of sleeping. I'm in a place, hallelujah, where I might be in sorrow and grieving. Come on, how many of you have cried yourself to sleep? Come on, how many of you have been grievous at night? But joy comes in the morning. So when my light comes, now it is my day. In other words, when God gives revelation to me, now I can begin to be productive. When God gives revelation to me, now I discover new possibilities. When God gives me revelation, now it is my day and I can move forward into his purpose and plans for me. What this tells us is that it could be 12 o'clock p.m. But if a person has not received the light of the glory of God, they are still in darkness and it's nighttime in their lives. Oh, yeah, that's why things keep happening, because we got a whole bunch of people who are walking around in the darkness. It's a whole bunch of people. For them, it's still nighttime. And the saints are those, watch this, who are children of light. That means the saints are supposed to be people who are walking around, and it's always daytime. I don't care if it's 8 p.m. or 1 a.m. in the morning. When you receive the revelation of the glory of God in your life, it's always daytime. It's always joy time. It's always the time because God has anointed you to carry forth his revelation and his light. Access to light automatically determines that you are in the day. Some people are asking the question, God, when is it going to be my day? God, when is it going to be my time? Your time and your day will come when you really receive light. Oh, some of you are only revelation away. You thought, see, what happens is when things don't happen the way we want, we start looking internally as if something's wrong. Now we have shifted from relational to transactional. So if I do right by my understanding, then God will give it to me. What you are missing is revelation. In other words, there is wisdom for you because you are a child of the king. There is wisdom for you because by covenant relationship, God says, I'll not withhold any good thing from those who walk uprightly before me. There's nothing that's going to happen, you all, unless we receive revelation. So that's why God says in the beginning, let there be light. Now I come to Isaiah. Isaiah was a mighty prophet. Isaiah prophesied the coming of Emmanuel, in man El, God. He said, the virgin shall be with child. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. Isaiah said that. Isaiah wrote chapter 53 of his book about the suffering servant. It is Isaiah that had the revelation that with his stripes we are healed. It was Isaiah that had the revelation that if you are established in righteousness, then no weapon that's formed against you shall be able to prosper. It was Isaiah that Hezekiah ran to when he knew he was dying and said, pray to the Lord for me that I might have an extension of years. This is why we still visit people in the hospital because it's not over until God says it's over. This is why we still pray for folks and we don't look at the prognosis or the diagnosis because the Bible says God answered the prayer and gave him another 15 years. Isaiah was that prophet. And so now Isaiah is prophesying to a people who have been in trouble. Is there anybody in here? You felt like, man, my life is in trouble. You see, let me give you a little background and context quickly. 
Isaiah, like prophets do, he identified with the pains of God's people. This is why God said, Moses, take your shoes off. Take your sandals off because the foot has 7,000 nerve endings. There's no part of your body more sensitive than the foot. Some of you might contest that, but I'm telling you what science says. 7,000 nerve endings. And when he took his sandals off, it was to identify with the pain of the people because when you don't have your shoes on, you can feel the rocks and you can feel the debris that's on the ground. And he had to get firmly planted in the pain of the people because you cannot deliver a people if you can't feel their pain. Isaiah identified with the plight of his kinsmen and the Lord told him to prophesy in Isaiah 58 verse 1 the Lord says cry aloud and spare not lift up thy voice like a trumpet and shew my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins in other words my people have been out of order my people have been in error my people have gone far away from me and I need you to begin to get their attention and then in Isaiah 59 he says this to the people of God because watch this it is your sins that have separated you from God it is your sin that causes God to feel like he's far away from you. Uh, so it's never God. It's always us. So if we feel as though we're not close, we got to do an inventory on ourselves. Isaiah begins to tell the people, behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. In other words, God has not changed. God has not changed his mind. And he says, neither is his ear heavy that he cannot hear. So it's not that God can't hear you, that your prayers are not being answered sometimes. He says, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Oh, that means that when you're doing your thing, that means when you have made up in your mind, I'm going to live the way I want to live. Then God is like this. Okay, talk to the hand because my face don't understand. God is like, I see you. I know you're talking to me, but I'm keeping it moving because you have demonstrated that your heart posture is not yielded to me. And so I can only work with a man or a woman who will yield themselves to me. I can only work with a man or a woman who will listen to me. I've given you chances. I've sent my prophets and you killed them. You rejected them. I gave you time after time. How? How many sermons have you heard? How many words did somebody give you? How many devotionals did you read? And you still do what you want to do. So now the heavens will be like brass. I'm sending prayers up and they bounce right back down. I send a prayer up and it bounces right back down. I send a prayer up and it bounces right back down. Why? Not because God is wicked or evil, but because of the sin. Woo. God's people were wicked. They were worshiping idols. This is the same God that brought them out of Egypt and they turned to idols. This is the same God that drowned Pharaoh's army in the Red Sea and now they're worshiping idols. This is the same God that brought water from the rock and now they're worshiping idols. This is the same God that brought manna from heaven and they're worshiping idols. It's the same God and they're giving their children to Molech and, 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 and they're, they're robbing their brothers and they're, they're, being, they're being cruel to their brothers and there's miscarriage of justice amongst God's people. People scheming left and right, maneuvering for political gain. I'm not talking about the world, I'm talking about God's people are doing this. And because of their iniquity and because of their sin, God allowed their enemies to overtake them. So I want you to understand here, when sin has taken over your life, you now are a captive. Jesus said, he who is a sinner is a slave to sin. The reason that we preach the gospel of Jesus, the reason that we preach righteousness is because sin wants to dominate your life. You cannot afford to dip your toe in the water to see how cold the temperature is. I'm telling you, it's going to hurt you, baby. It's going to be something that's detrimental to your life and to your health. So God says, don't do it. God says, stay away. God says, follow me. God says, obey me. Why? Because I want to protect you. Because when you come from out of my covering, when you come into sin, guess what? Legally, I'm not obliged to cover you anymore because you chose to come up out of my covering. So now you are by yourself. And since you chose to come up out of my covering, now I'm going to let you experience what life is like without me yeah yeah since you chose the world over me then I'm going to allow you to know what it feels like 
when I'm not around, even though I am around, but I'm going to remove my hand a bit. Now look at the mercy of God, because even then they can only do what he allowed. Woo. The people had recognized that they messed up. They understood that judgment was upon them because they violated covenant. They understood that their captivity to Babylon and their captivity to Assyria was because they messed up and missed the mark. And they wept. Psalm 137, look at it later. They wept. It says they wept. They wept by the rivers of Babylon. And they cried because they remembered what it was like when they had the temple. And now their life is in shambles. And they remember what it was like when God was with them. And they remember what joy they had when they were walking in covenant relationship with God. And they remember what it was like when they would dance. And they remembered what it was like when they would go to the temple and hear from the priest. They remembered what it was and they began to miss it. They began to sorrow because they backslid. They began to cry. They began to long for Jerusalem again. They began to cry and they began to weep. They wept by the rivers of Babylon. We ain't never going to get out of here. Oh, why did I do it? Sometimes some of us feel like that. When we come to ourselves, we're like, oh, man, I was a dummy. Why did I do that? Why did I make that decision? Why did I go that way? They wept. They were sad. They had no joy. But I'm so glad that God looks beyond my faults and sees my need. I'm so glad that despite my foolishness and despite my stubbornness, God is yet merciful. Because after Isaiah 59, here comes a word of restoration. After they have cried their tears and after they have had their sorrow, here comes the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord is arise. I know your life is full of sadness. I know your enemy has overtaken you. I know you've been treated cruelly. Watch this. I know you miss me. Woo! Oh, come on, ladies. Have you ever heard a man beg for you? I know you. I know you miss me, boy. But guess what? You should have did right by me. Come on. Who, who, who saw color purple? Until you do right by me, everything you do is going to crumble. Come on here. I know you miss me because I was good to you. I know you miss me because there's nobody who will love you like I love you. But guess what? That was yesterday. And I allowed it to happen because there was no way you were going to come out of your selfish ways. There was no other way that you would learn that you are not the boss applesauce but I am God and beside me there is no other but now your time of trial has ended now your time of sadness has ended now your time of tribulation has ended and so the word to you today is arise come on God says it's time to get up Woo. it's time you're not a victim anymore your sad days are over. If you came in here heavy, God says, arise. If you came in here broken, God says, arise. If you came in here gloomy, God says, arise. If you came in here confused, God says, arise. Whew. Oh, my God. Let me work this thing a little bit more before we go. He says, arise and shine. Why? Because your light has come. I'm telling you, it's the same light that was there in the beginning. It's the same light, the glory of God that causes new things to be birthed. It's the same light that causes beginnings to happen in your life. It's the same light that releases the creative force of God. He says, arise and shine. Why? Because your light has come. If you came in here and you have had a world of darkness and you felt like I just can't seem to get right. I won't do right and I can't do right. The Lord says, your nighttime season is over and now the time is for you to arise I know you messed up but arise I know you've been ignorant but arise 
I know you've acted foolish, but arise. Oh, that word arise means to be aroused, to stir up, to make a stand, to be strengthened, to succeed. Come on, he's pulling you out of your darkness. He's pulling you out of your loader bar, your place of nothing. Is He is pulling you out and he's saying arise. Come on, will you trust God today? I don't care what you did yesterday. I don't care what family you come from. Don't be like Gideon and say, well, my family is the weakest family and I come from the weakest clan in the tribe. And I, 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 I. No, he says, arise. Then he says, shine. That means to blink, to beam, to glow. To make a light, it means to make a fire. God is looking for his people who will be on fire for him. Come on. Some of us, because we made mistakes, we let the fire go out. Come on. And he's saying, I'm stirring up the flames again. I'm fanning on your flames. Come on, those of you who are grill masters, you understand if you're barbecuing, you need more oxygen. Hallelujah. To cause the fire to be hotter. So what do you do? You begin to play with the vents and you open the vents so more air can get in. I'm telling you, you just need the breath of God and the breath of God comes by the word of the Lord and as long as God is able to release a word to your life I'm telling you that's enough power that's enough wind to cause you to get up to be stirred up hallelujah so that a fire can blow and blaze in your life again if you walked away from God if you are a backslider if you are one who's turned around and gone the opposite way God is saying arise and shine he's saying get back on fire again man of God get back on fire again woman of God come up out of the dust shake that bondage off of you break the chains off of your neck and arise arise shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you your light has come so check out this order check out this order first we receive God's light what that says is, apart from him, we're in darkness. What that says is, apart from him, we have nothing to offer. That means we don't have our own light. That means I cannot save myself. That means I can't heal myself. That means I cannot restore myself. It says that we arise and we shine after our light has come. So first, we receive God's light. We don't have light. We don't have the answers. We don't know the way until God shows us the way. And once we receive our light, we're like prisms. Anybody know that term? We're like prisms. Now we begin to reflect the light. The light beams on us and then it it, it flows out of us and we begin to express the manifold wisdom of God. We begin to interpret his heart to people who don't know him. First we receive his light and then we arise and then we shine. Why? Because darkness is covering the earth, people of God. Look at what he says. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. Our world is in trouble. I just read that headline to you. When children are no longer off limits, it's darkness. When children are no longer the priority, it's darkness. We got too many babies who have a never-ending nightmare. Because it's darkness all throughout the land. When we have ideologies and theories that are presuming to prevail over the truth of God, it's deep darkness. Oh, but I love the Bible writer named Matthew. He said, for those who sat in deep darkness, a light has shined. So even though there's darkness all over the land and deep darkness upon the people, Isaiah says, but... Oh, how many of you like that phrase, but God? <laughs> but the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. So again, it's not my light, but the reason I have light is because his light is shining down on me. Come on. The old folks used to sing the song, shine your light on me. Come on. How many of you will say right now, Lord, if you are willing, you can shine your light upon my life. First, we receive the light of God. Then we arise and we shine. Let your light so shine so that who can see? So that men could see. And then what? God gets the glory. We receive his light. 
Now we have light. And when we produce fruit, people see it and they wonder, how did you get like that? How did you learn to pray like that? How come you're not fighting because they did that to you? How did you get that wisdom? Where did that strategy come from? And now you give God the glory. So your works are light and people now understand that it's not you. But guess what? It's the God in me. And he gets the glory. Verse 3. The Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. And all will see how great, how great is our God. How will they see when you arise and shine? How will they know when you arise and shine? How will they come out of ignorance when you arise and shine? The Lord began to tell me earlier this week, he says, I'm building an army. And he says, there's a great urgency in the earth. I'm telling you, we got to shake ourselves. Some of us have been persecuting ourselves for mistakes that we made 10 years ago, five years ago. I'm telling you, you are not a mistake. And even if you made a mistake, you don't have to stay in your past. I'm telling you, God wants you to shake yourself. God wants you to drop the bags, drop the heavy loads. It's like you're carrying weights everywhere that you go and you'll never run for Jesus that way. You'll never be free that way. God says, arise. Oh, somebody shout arise. Oh, come on, say it like you mean. Arise. Come on, say arise. Shine. Oh, I'm telling you. Now, I'm going to show you this image and we're going to get out of here in a second. I'm going to show you this image. I'm going to show you this image. You see, G, the Bible says that the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the enemy. Did you hear what I said? The Son of Man was manifest. He appeared. He came into being to destroy the works of the enemy. He's not just a man with a lamb in the picture. He came as a warrior to destroy the works of the enemy. John chapter 8 verse 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. John 9 chapter 5, he says, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Woo! He is the light. So when Jesus comes into your life, now the light of the glory of God is established in you and upon you. So if you have Jesus, then you have the light. And if you have the light, then you can bring, bring revelation to the world so people can see and so people can be loosed. Some people stay bound because they have no guiding light. They stay bound because they remain in darkness. Well, the Bible says this is why he came. Now, look at this image. I got to fast forward because he moved me a different way. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. This is still good stuff, though. We almost done. Look at that image. When Jesus says, whatever you bind on earth, this is a picture of that. This is, this is calf roping. If you've ever seen a rodeo, those cowboys get that lasso, and that calf is running. And they, they, they really, they cold with it. They, like, they better than Wonder Woman. They just, and they catch the calf by the, by the foot. In other words, the calf was running, but it gets caught by the hoof, and they go down. And then that cowboy runs real fast and jumps on top of him, and he begins to, and the competition is how fast can you do it? Look at how that calf is bound. He's bound by the one hoof, and then he's bound by the other hoofs. He's not going nowhere. That's a picture of what it means to be captive to sin can't go nowhere 
even if you struggle, you can't go nowhere. And this is what Satan wants to do to the saints. He wants to trick you into thinking that you got to stay like this when Jesus came to set you free. Come on, the power of God is what he said. The very same power that raised Christ from the dead is alive inside of you. There is no reason a child of God should be like this. Shake yourself. He sets you free from this. And the word, when it says to destroy the works of the devil, that word is luo. It means to loose any person that's tied up or tangled up. It means to release from bonds. It means to discharge from prison. It means to deprive of authority, to loose what is compacted or built together, to demolish, overthrow, do away with, declare unlawful, to dismiss, to break up, annul, and subvert. That word is powerful. So that means that Jesus, the light of the world, came to do this to the works of the enemy. There is no reason that we should stay bound because the light has come. And when we begin to bring forth the light of the glory of God through our witness, through our lifestyle, through our productivity, we help people to get free of this bondage. We got too many families that's tangled up and tied up like this. Our cities are bound with demons like this. Our cities are overcome with thinking that's like that causes them to be like this. But Jesus came to be light and he's raising us up to be light. Our next is now. And I want to just close with the Apostle Paul. Because the Bible lets us know, I'm paraphrasing for sake of time, but the Bible lets us know that Paul was a Pharisee of Pharisees. And Paul did not like the church. In fact, Paul was an enemy of the church. Paul was an enemy of Jesus. Paul would arrest Christians. Paul would even bring Christians to a point of execution and death. And the Bible says that Paul, when at that time he was Saul, was on his way to Damascus because he was looking for people who followed Jesus. And he asked for permission. He was zealous. He was, he was on a mission to find Christians to bring them to what he called justice. Oh, but the Bible says, and this is Acts chapter 9, that as he was journeying, as he was on his way to Damascus, all of a sudden, a light shined on him. <laughs> a light shined around him from heaven. This was not a regular light. This was not a natural light. This was a light from heaven. And I believe it was the same light that was there when the Lord said, let there be light. And when this light shined upon Saul, who would become Paul, he was overtaken and he was subdued and he was captivated and he fell to the ground. And all of a sudden, here it is, revelation, he heard a voice begin to speak to him. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul says, who are you, Lord? And the voice says, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting it is hard for you to kick against the goads do you know that as long as you remain in a lifestyle where you're doing what you want to do you are working against the purpose and the plan of God you see Saul was working against God's plan for humanity because the Bible says that Jesus was a light that was going to bring about healing for all the nations Jesus was the one that was going to lead all people to freedom from captivity and if Saul was working against Jesus and his church then Saul was in effect working against the purpose and the plan of God and when you and I are not advancing and doing what God says guess what we are in the way and we are a hindrance and we are those who are opposing the work of God far be it from me and far be it from you that you would be in a place of obstinance and that you would be a person of mendacity that means that you would be a liar you know what a liar is a liar is somebody who purports to be one thing but 
but they do another. Hallelujah. Come on. Let there be no liars in the church. Let there be no actors in the church. No hypocrites in the church. No mask wearers in the church. Hallelujah. Because if you wear a mask and you're in the way, and that's why Jesus rebuked Satan when he is in Peter's words. He said, get behind me. You are an offense to me. Come on. I think some of us is thinking God is coming with gifts and God is coming with correction. God is coming with the rebuke. Why? Because when we're not doing what God told us to do, then we are disobedient and we are in the way and we're just as good as a person who worships another God. He's saying, why are you in the way? Why are you getting in my way? Why are you not advancing my cause? Saul was trembling. And this is what he said. Oh, whew. this is what he said. He says, he says, Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do? He came, he came from a place. He came from a place. He came from a place of obstinance. And when the light came upon him, when the glory of the Lord shined upon him, it rendered him helpless. And all he could say is, Lord, what do you want me to do? And I believe this is where God wants his church to get to. I believe God wants his church to come to a place where we are captivated and overtaken by the power of his glory. And we fall to a place of submission and humility. And we begin to ask him, Lord, what do you want me to do? Not God, this is what I want to do, but Lord, what do you want me to do? See, revelation compels you to shift your posture and shift your mentality. What do you want me to do, God? Can you imagine what would happen in the body of Christ if more people were saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? I know it sounds good to say, God, I'll do this and God do that. But what we should be saying is, Lord, I'm here for it. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And then here's what the Lord says. Ooh, here's this word again. With all his dirt, with all of Saul's track record, with all that he did to fight the church, you know what the Lord said? Arise. He knew exactly who Saul was. But with all of the wrongs that he had committed, with all of his pride, with all the negativity and the fear that Saul had provoked amongst the church, Jesus, when he asked Saul, what are you when Saul asked him, rather, what do you want me to do? Jesus, he didn't say, he didn't, he didn't badger him, and he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't bully him, and he didn't tear him down and say, you did this and this against me. He said, arise. He said, arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. See, there's no instructions until you make up in your mind that you're going to get up. You're not getting the next step from him until you make up in your mind I'm not staying here he didn't want Saul to stay there crying and having pity I got your attention now now it's time to get to work now it's time for restoration to come now it's time for you to let me heal you now it's time for me to strengthen you why because I have a work for you to do I'm not done with you. I'm not mad at you. I just want to get your attention so that you can arise and shine. Why? Because your light has come. When the light came to Saul's life, he was never the same. Now, many of us will say, well, pastor, I didn't do what Saul did. I ain't never hurt nobody. I didn't persecute the church. I didn't make nobody get killed because they say worship you and they live for you. I'm not like him, God. Well, guess what? If you can recognize that he would do that for somebody who was like that, then how much more can he do with you? How much more should you arise and take your place, soldier of God? 
warrior for God. Come on, God has no wimps. He's got no simps. He's got no pimps. He's got no imps. God is raising up warriors. God is raising up prophets. God is raising up apostles. God is raising up evangelists. God is raising up psalmists. God is raising up pastors. God is raising up intercessors to shine for him. Our next is now. But our next won't commence unless we arise and shine. When Saul said, Lord, what do you want me to do? It was an expression of seeking. It went from being all about his agenda and he deferred and said, Lord, it's your agenda. What do you want me to do? He went from his own plans to seek it and then he submitted himself. And later on the Bible says that there were scales that fell from his eyes. Whew. And then he was able to see differently. See when the light comes you see different. See you can't fulfill what God wants you to fulfill if you see the same way you've been seeing all this time. So God has to arrest you with circumstance until you come to a place of submission to him. He, he overtakes you and, and renders you helpless. All Saul could do was tremble. And I don't know exactly how it felt. I was not there, but he trembled. But whatever it was, it, it brought him to a place where this very proud man was like a little boy, was like a little baby. And all he could do is say, Lord, what you want me to do? Now he can give you instruction. So what about the people who have embarked upon journeys, but the light never shined on them? Who talked to them? And told them to go into ministry if it wasn't the light. Who told them to make a CD if the light didn't shine on them? If they didn't get revelation, then what are they doing? Maybe that's why we don't have more productivity in the church. Because we got people who think they heard God, but they heard their own heart. The problem is that the heart is desperately wicked. And deceitful above all things, and your heart will run out. Because when hard times come, that's when your heart will give up on you. Oh, come on. We caught in the, in the hood growing up. We say, man, that little man got heart. Come on, when you used to get into a fight, people used to have fights. And even if you was getting whooped and you kept getting up, somebody would say, oh, he got heart. They stopped paying attention to the fact that you lost the fight. What they said was, you got heart. Why? Because even though you caught the blows, you never stayed down. And God is saying, you might have caught some blows because of what life did to you, but today is the day to arise. Oh, come on, stand on your feet. I wonder, is there anybody who recognizes I've been down too long? I've been sad too long. I've been hurting too long. I've allowed the enemy to convince me that I'm not worthy, that I'm not God material, that I'm not qualified, that I'm not the one that he loves, the one that he died for, the one that he bled for. Today is your day to arise. I want to say to somebody who knows they need the Lord Jesus Christ, today your light has come. Today is your day to get up out that deathbed to get up out of that stupor. Come on, life has rocked you to sleep. You've been rocked by problems. You've been rocked by disappointment. You've been hit so many times, you say, I throw in the towel. I'm over it, God. I've been hurt too many times. I'm tired of people letting me down. I'm tired of people hurting my feelings. I'm tired of people walking over me. I'm tired of people mistaking my kindness for weakness. God, I'm tired of it. But guess what? God says, I know what they did to you, baby. But I'm still telling you right now to arise. Oh, come on, just lift your hands. Oh, I want you to be honest right now. If you're not running for God like he told you to, you need to arise. If you're not in ministry, if you're not in place where you need to be, you need to arise right now. 
Woo, come on. He said, I'm married to the backslider. You might have went the opposite way, but God says, arise. Oh, come on, if that's you, I want you just to start to come to the altar. It doesn't matter where you are or who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. Come on, if you are, even if you're not backslidden, but you know you are not walking in God's purpose like you are supposed to. He says to you, arise, shine. Why? Because your light has come. Come on, come on to the altar and lay it down before Jesus. Come on to the altar and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, what would you have me to do? Lord, what are you saying to me right now? Lord, I want to follow. If you lead me, I will follow you. Come on, lift those hands and surrender. Oh, come on, don't be bashful. Come on, don't worry about who's... I don't care if you're a leader. I don't care if you got a title. If you have not been running like he said, it's your time to arise. If you don't know Jesus as your personal savior, he says, arise. Come on, come up out of sin. Jesus said, I died for you. I bled for you. I died to set you free. You don't have to stay bound. You don't have to stay in the dark. Your light has come. Oh, come on, I know there's more. I know there's more. I know there's more. I know there's more. We haven't even begun to do whatever, everything God's got for us. We just getting started. You thought this was something? Don't let the lights fool you. Don't let the mic fool you. We just getting started. Arise. Shine. For your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Oh, today is my day. You see, we already prophesied. Today will be the best day of your life. And when no light comes, I'm telling you, it's the best day of your life. As long as you're in darkness, it's not a good day. As long as you have a night season, it's a bad day. But as soon as your light comes, I'm telling you, it's the best day of your life. Because when the light comes, that's when the turnaround happens. Today will be the best day of my life. It will be the best day of my life. My light has come. I refuse to stay the same. I refuse to stay stuck. Is there anybody tired of being stuck? Oh yeah, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. Is there anybody tired of being stuck? Are you tired of going in circles? Are you tired of being broke? Are you tired of being wounded? Are you tired of being confused? Arise and shine. Your light has come. Woo! Come on, I want some people to just start to pray. Oh, don't change that. Stay where you were. Stay where you were. If you came to the altar, I just want you to take a step forward real quick. Just take, take a step forward. Oh, come on, your light has come. Your light has come. And because your light has come, today will be the best day of your life. I'll never be the same. I'm going to walk differently. I'm going to talk differently. My mind is made up. I refuse to stay small. I refuse to stay bound. Why should I be bound when he has set me free? Hallelujah. I need some prayer leaders to come forward. Come on. Come on, prayer leaders, come forward and begin to pray. I refuse to stay bound. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord is upon you. We release this man of God into his purpose. We release him to follow. We oh, Rebakasi. Just receive it right now. Oh, come on. I see it turning right now. The Lord is saying, my grace is sufficient for you, son. He says, I've not lost. I've not, it's, I've not, I've not, I've not left you. And it's not lost upon me, says the Lord. The things that you have prayed to me. But God says, uh, even as water continues to run, uh, even if find its way, you shall continue to move forward. Uh, I decree now. Rivers of living water begin to flow. Jesus, 
her light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon her. Her light has come. God, we decree now that darkness has no hold on her life. We break it in the name of Jesus over her family, her household. We decree light. Let there be light. Healing power, restoration power, deliverance power. Father, thank you, Lord, that she's come with humility. God, as she surrenders, we thank you for the breaking forth. We decree now a new day. We decree now a new beginning. We decree now tomorrow has come. Oh, tomorrow has come. Your light has come. Oh, we break the power of the enemy. You will not be deceived any longer. You will not be afraid any longer. We pronounce a death sentence to the machinations of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, the powers of hell will not prevail. In the name of the Lord, he will not have your seed. In Jesus' name, we break every curse. Oh, come on. I need some help over here. I need some help over here. I need some women. Come on. Over here on this side. I need some help. Holy Ghost. I need a female. Come on. Thank you. Your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Your light has come. 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 Oh, come on. Oh, come on. I'll never be the same. Hallelujah. I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. Come on. No man has a grip on my life. No woman has a grip on my life. The sun has set me free. I'm free indeed. I'm free indeed. I'm free indeed. Oh. Oh, 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 Makata Malabasi, Remasata Malabakasate, oh, Masata Malabakasata, every chain broken, every fetter loose, every bond is destroyed. In the name of Jesus, the power of the Lord be upon you, the glory of the Lord shine upon you in the name of Jesus we decree resurrection Jesus said I am the resurrection and the life and the life is in the light your light is coming that means death is over the nighttime is over your light is coming your light is coming your light is coming Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. If you're not at the altar, I just need you to worship with us. If you're not at the altar, I just need you to worship with us. Come on, I want you to rejoice and give God praise because somebody's life is never going to be the same today. Come on, give God praise. There's a turnaround today. Come on, give God praise. The devil is, is, is defeated. Jesus is exalted. And we have the victory. Oh, come on. I said the devil is defeated. Jesus is exalted. Jesus is exalted. Oh, come on. I dare you to come to the front. If you're bound with something, if you got an addiction, I dare you to come to the front right now. Come on. There's no demon in hell that can stop the power of God. If you are bound by drugs, alcohol, lust, Pornography, come to the altar right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The name above all names. In the name of the name above all names. In the name of the name above all names. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus sets you free. Thank you for freedom, Jesus. Thank you for your freedom, Jesus. Thank you for your freedom, Jesus. Arise and shine. We see your salvation, Jesus. We see your salvation, Jesus. We arise and shine. We arise and shine. And we see your glory. We 
Jesus, have your way. King of kings, have your way. Lord of lords, have your way. Transform my heart. Transform my life. Transform my mind. Transform my spirit. Right here while I'm on this altar. 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 Come on, before we go, I know the hour's been sent. This hour's been spent, but we still got people up here. They believe in God. God has met them. Don't stop, y'all. We're going to come back there in a minute. But for those of you who are able... But, but for those of you who are able, before we go, I want us to enter into a time of intercession. For those of you who are able, I want us to enter into a time of prayer. And it's going to launch us into our tomorrow. I told you tomorrow, we're still consecrating. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and we're still going to pray at 6.30 here in the sanctuary. The music is going to come up, and I want us to begin to pray. And I want you to pray like you've never prayed before. The Bible says that when Paul and Silas began to pray, there was an earthquake. Things began to shake. I'm telling you, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. The Bible says Elisha was just like you and me. Come on. Elisha liked to eat his favorite foods. Elisha even liked to go to sleep. But guess what? When Elisha began to pray, something was happening that didn't happen when he didn't pray. So I'm going to ask the musicians in a second to begin to take us up a little bit. And those of you who are willing, I want you just to begin to join us in a time of prayer. If you have to go, I'm not going to force you to stay. I release you in the name of Jesus. We love you. God bless you. But for those of you who are willing, I want you to remain and begin to pray with us. In the name of Jesus, come on, let's go.